David therefore departed from there and he escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brethren and all of his father's house heard it, they went down there or thither, if you were reading King James, they went down there to him. Philip, could you give me one other, uh, give me one other favor? Can you grab the uh, dry erase board and maybe put it right here? Do you see those markers? Maybe they're back there. They're over there. There's some yeah. there. Okay, because I want to be able to write these things down. Yeah, that's fine. That'll be good. Thank you. Can everybody see that all right? Everybody see the board okay? I know I got that big one, but I just don't want to use it right now. Thank you. Forgot about that. All right, so a couple of things I want to start talking to you about here. Let's go to verse 2. This is the verse I want to focus on with you because I think this has something to do with you and me. Verse 2, it says, And everyone that was in distress, say that with me, distress. Distress. And everyone that was in debt, say that word with me, debt. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone that was discontented, let's say that one together, discontented. discontented. They gathered themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them, and there were with him about 400 men. Verse 3, And David went from there to Mizpah of Moab, and he said to the king of Moab, Let my father and my mother, I ask you, come forth and be with you until I know what God will do for me. Until, God, until I will know what God will do for me. So I'm going to focus on a couple of things with you this morning. I'm talking to you about potential. I'm going to talk to you about potential. This may be a strange place to come from, but this is what I heard the Lord saying to me this week. I don't believe that I'm here by an accident. That's right. And I don't believe that you're here by accident. I believe that God has things planned out in our lives. I do think that we can make choices and get off course. And all of us have done those things. But I want to focus on the, these people that have gathered themselves to David. And one of the things that I'm looking at with this is God, when God is going to do something, God always sets a person. Whether it's a man or a woman, he sets a person in places. I've been reading to you in recent that God sets the solitary in a family. Yes, he does. He sets a solitary person in a family. He sets you in certain places because there's something that he has that he wants as an outcome to happen in your life. What I'm looking at with, with the people that have gathered themselves to David is these are all people of potential. I want you to know that you are a person of potential. I think that you're a person of great potential. Moreover, I think God thinks that you have great potential. Potential is having or showing some type of capacity to become something or to develop into something in the future. So potential always is going to be about the future. I feel like I have a book about this, Sherry, inside of me. I just got to, I got to write it. That's why I didn't want this on camera today. Because I've talked with you about purpose. I've talked with you about receiving impartation, but I believe that God has something to say to you about your potential. Potential is also what, the, what is called latent qualities. What is a latent quality? Something that is latent is something that is lying dormant inside of you. There are some qualities and there's abilities that you have that have to be developed. And they will lead to 
future success or usefulness. Why am I talking about this? I want you to look with me because I'm going to write these up here. David, y'all know that David at this point of what I'm reading in 1 Samuel 22, he's already been anointed. He's already been anointed by God to be king. Right. Did the day that did the day that David got anointed, did David become king? No. 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 It was quite a long time. See, God has the God has this habit <coughs> of calling things that be not as though they were. And you've got to get used to this habit of God. God has this habit. Let me say that again. God has habits. Not all habits are bad. That's right. Habits can be good or bad. Yes, sir. But God has the habit of calling something that is not as though it were. So you have to understand many times that when God will speak to you, whether he speaks to you through the Holy Spirit or he speaks to you through a prophet or he speaks to you through a man of God or a woman of God, and those need to be bona fide voices, that he speaks in terms as though it is not at this point, but it will be. Amen. And when he says it, he says it with complete confidence. And you have to know that there are things, there are qualities and there are abilities, and there are things that are laying dormant inside of you, just like I have talked to you as a father would his children about their purpose. Because you have to know that God has given you a purpose. He gave you a purpose from the time you were formed in your mother's womb. Matter of fact, I can prove to you from Scripture that He gave you this purpose before the foundation of the world. Those purposes were hidden in Christ, but now they are made manifest in us. Colossians tells us this. But I also believe that there are things that are potential. I believe that you not only have purpose, but you have potential. Matter of fact, your purpose can be potential. Many people will live their entire life and never know their purpose, never know their God-given purpose. As Miles Monroe said one time, the most expensive real estate on the earth is the graveyard. The most expensive real estate on earth is the graveyard. People that didn't understand his statement, he explained it this way. Millions of people have died with undiscovered potential and their potential has been buried in the earth. Wow. We do not want to live our lives. Natalie, we don't want to live our lives and not come to our full God-given potential. Amen. But you cannot judge where you are by where you're going to be. Right. You cannot judge Amen. where you are by what God has already called you because he has this habit of calling things, Jason, that be not as though they were. When God called David... He was just a little shepherd boy. Forgotten even by mom and dad. Sometimes people don't see you in the potential of the capacities of who you are destined to be. Your age does not matter. Your age does not matter. When God called Moses, he was 40 years old. He didn't reach his place of potential until he was 80. And for the next 40 years, he lived out that potential. When God called Joshua, he was 80 years old. He spent the first 40 years of his life as a slave. The next 40 years of his life, he spent in the desert and in the wilderness serving Moses. 
that the latter part of his life was greater than the former because when God caused him to be leader of Israel, he brought people into their promise. Amen. See, God has, you know, it doesn't matter how you started. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter your financial status. It doesn't matter to the color of your skin. It doesn't matter whether you're male or female. It doesn't matter whether you're Jew or Greek. When God calls you, he does not call you as you are. He calls you as in his mind what you're going to be. Amen. Let's look at what David, what's happening with David. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that what I'm about to talk about, religious people will have a very, very, very difficult time with what I'm about to talk about. Let me say that again because I want you to hear that. Religious people are going to have a very, that's why I'm not putting this on Facebook. Because I just don't, I just don't want to invite the religious crowd to hear what I've got to say. I'm, I'm going into the place right here, right now, like David did. Sometimes you've got to understand when you need to go into a cave. Amen. Sometimes you need to understand when you need to go into hiding. Sometimes you need to understand when you need to pull back. That's right. Sometimes you need to understand. You know, everything that faces the church world today is all about marketing and getting out there in front of people and trying to draw a crowd to yourself. David is going the completely opposite direction. He's already been called. He's already been anointed. He's already been recognized by Samuel the prophet. As everything from the point that the point that, that David was anointed, everything changed in his life. I can tell you by scripture. You know, sometimes you may be looking for recognition. You may be looking for people to, to know you, to know who you are. David was trying to go the opposite direction. All throughout the Psalms, he keeps tell, saying to God, God, hide me. Hide me. I had this conversation with God years ago. God, why, 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 do, why am I here? Why am I in Lancaster? Why am I on this little street? Nobody knows who I am. Nobody knows what I'm doing. Why have you forgotten me? And God spoke to me that day and he said, I have not forgotten you, son, but I have hidden you. And I have hidden you for myself. Yeah. Amen. In De December of 2017, about 10 years later, I heard the voice of the Lord say to me, I'm going to bring you out of hiding. But with it is going to come new enemies. I never thought that the enemies that became my enemies would be my enemies. You have to understand that David, even his own father-in-law, Saul, became his enemy. Why? Because of the anointing that rested upon him. Because of the call that was upon his life. David is turned to the cave to hide himself. Watch what's going to happen right here. Because this has something to do with me and it has something to do with you. I would not be sitting here right now if I did not believe that I am a set man in this territory. Amen. I believe I'm a set man in this territory. Amen. Right. I don't say that in a prideful way. I say that in the, the capacities that I know who I am. I'm confident in the Lord and I'm confident in what God is doing. Amen. I'm not yes. seeking for anything except that which God will bring to me. Amen. This is the position that David has turned himself to. When you turn yourself into hiding, you will find out who God will bring to you. Watch closely. David hid himself, and it says, Then his brother and all of his family, or his father's house, they heard about it, and they came down to him. But I want to focus on verse 2. Now, sometimes it's easy for family to find you. Listen to me very closely. You're going to have to allow people to find you. Amen. 
I asked God at one point, I said, God, why did you hide me? He said, because I did not want people to find you. I wanted them to find me. But once you've been brought out into the public, that's right. There you go. Then you will start wanting to hide yourself again. Because <laughs> let me just go ahead and tell you, the public is mean. Yeah, that's the truth. The yeah. public is nasty. Yeah, they are. Anybody who's ever worked with the public, or yeah. probably already they done said amen and shaking their head yeah. three times. Yep. Yeah. Because the world is cruel, sons. All my sons, all the children here, let me go and tell you, the world is a cruel and mean place. I'm not trying to paint a bad picture, but the world can be a mean place. Let me go even further. The church can be a very mean and cruel place. Yep. Oh, my God. David, you don't think David, David said, yeah, I, I, I was looking for my enemy to wound me. He said, I didn't realize it was the person that was going to walk to the house of the Lord with me. If it was my enemy, I would have prepared myself. But this was my common friend. This is why you hear me making a complete transition in this day and this hour because the church has got to transition into the place of, of out of being in the mind of churchianity. And you hear me talking family, father, mother, wife. Because I can go ahead and tell you. You see my sons, my natural sons? Wave at them. Wave at them. My natural sons, wave at me. Wave at me. Go ahead. I want you to wave. I had all those waving at me. <laughs> if you walk in my house tonight and you threaten one of my sons, what do you think I'm going to do? <laughs> what do you say? Kill, Kill us. us. <laughs> I'm gonna hurt you. <laughs> See, we've developed within Christianity. We've developed. We've become too nice. I think we've become nicer than God on some things. Amen. Absolutely. We just gotta love everybody. Yeah, you are to, to love one another. You ain't even to love your enemies. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you this. Don't mess with my children. Amen. Don't mess with my children. Don't mess with my wife or my children. That's right. See, I've watched, I've watched all this go on for a quarter of a century. And I'm not talking about here. I'm talking about in the church world. Pastors' wives are beat up, beat down, talked about, trash talked. That is the, they say, besides the person that takes out the garbage in the church, being a pastor's wife is the worst position. Mm -hmm. This is why I, I, have, I have totally, I have totally abandoned all of how the church today operates. Because it's like a big machine. And it's, a, it's like a big business. And it's cranking out a product. And cranking out a service. And cranking out entertainment. So my house don't operate that way. This is the household of God. This is the household of, you're the temple, and this is the household of faith. This is the household of faith. I run this household of faith like I run my house. I run this household of faith like I run my house. There's one of my sons. See how comfortable they are? <laughs> See how comfortable they are. They just walk right through your teaching. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. <laughs> so here's who I'm looking for. I'm looking for these people. I'm looking for the distressed. I'm looking for those in debt. And I'm looking for the discontented. Now this is where I told you it's going to get real sticky at. Them. 
Let's look at these again. 1 Samuel 22 and 2, it says, Everyone that was in distress, everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented, what did they do? They gathered themselves unto David, and he became a captain over them. And there were with him about 400 men. Let me go ahead and tell you from Scripture. If you read the Bible any, there was a group of people known as David's mighty men. Yep. This is them. Wow. Wow. Hmm. They wasn't real mighty when they came to David. That's right. They were distressed, in debt, and discontented. What did David do here? So you you got to here here's where church the church and churchy churchy people I'll call them churchy here's where churchy people go wrong they want ready made people you're right most pastors and church leaders want ready made people they want people that are already successful have money because they can pay tithes. They don't want people with, with problems. Let me go in and tell you who God is going to send to you. Because this is what I'm looking for God to send to me. I'm looking for him to send these type of people. Why is this? I can go in and tell you. You better listen real closely to me. Ready-made people will never develop a loyalty to you. That's right. This is what was missing from David's life. You can sit here and think, I'm anointed. I'm anointed too. You can sit here and think, I'm called just like you are. Why is David not sitting on the throne? Is it because Saul is still alive? No. God has already called him to be king. God has already said, you are the king over my people. You are the king. of This is the king that I've chosen. I gave y'all Saul. That's, that's the type of man y'all want. See, there's a type of man that most people want as their leader. But there's a different type of man that God wants as his leader. And he's the man that has a heart after God. He doesn't have to have some great stature. He doesn't have to look a certain way. Matter of fact, he will probably, David, when he was called, he was probably, when he walked into his daddy's house, he probably didn't smell good. He probably smelled like sheep. <laughs> probably had calluses on his finger from playing his harp because there was nobody listening to him. See, it's all right. It is all right, family, for you to be in a place where nobody knows who you are. Amen. That's one of the best places for you to be. Let me tell you why. Every day I get solicited for money. Yep. Every single day of my life. Every single day in, in my life, somebody is having a crisis. Their church got robbed. Their church got burnt down. They got a thousand orphans that they can't feed, and they want me to feed them. And I tell them, I have hungry children too. They live in my house. You begin to second think. You begin to second think when you're out there in the public eye Maybe I need to pull back and go into a cave and find out who it is that God really wants to bring into my life. Because you can't help everybody. There's the mistake that you will make. When you think that you can help everybody and you think that you're God Junior, you just made a mistake. What are these people? Distressed. April, could you help me? Yeah. Or Sherry, yeah. Sherry, you got good hand right? No. <laughs> All right, April. We we'll bring your. Not really. I don't. You don't have good handwriting. It's all right. If somebody else could do it, that'd be good. Cause I'm. I'm good. Yeah, I'm gonna give you a different color because I want you to write. I, I was gonna go sit with Zeb. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. You a good speller? Cause I'm gonna throw out some handwriting. I'm gonna be last year. I want to spell it there. Okay. All right, the distressed. Let's write up under here. These are the people that are stressed. 
stress. They're stressed out. They are in anguish. This is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for these people to appear. When you pull back, when you pull back, this is, listen to me real closely. Many times, when you have the wrong people in your life, they can take your focus away from who you need to be focused on. See, that David had to get away from Saul and all of the, the problems surrounding that relationship. Saul was trying to kill him. He spent his time running, but he's pulled into a cave now. He's in a hiding place. You just got to find a hiding place sometimes. Amen. How many times do you hear David talk about, hide me, hide me, oh, yeah. hide me, hide me, so my enemy can't find me. I want to be hidden. When you get into a hiding place, this is where you allow God to bring to you who needs to be in your life. Amen. I know one thing about myself. I know that I am called by God. I'm not called by God to pastor everybody, but I know that if, I, if somebody asked me, who are you to pastor? I would tell you right now, entrepreneurs. That's the only great people that I know that I'm called to, to pastor. Now, does that mean that I'm a pastor to everybody? No. Does that mean that I will teach people in other capacities? Some people I may be an apostle to. Some I'm, I don't know what I am. It don't matter. But I know this. I know who I'm called to and I know what I'm looking for. And this is what I'm looking for. People who are stressed, people who are in anguish. These are people that are in a narrow place. They're, it's a very, they're in a narrow place. They may be narrow-minded. Their, their mind and thinking has got to be opened up. Or they're oppressed. Or they're oppressed. Here's, here's what I'm, I'm wanting you to get, Okay. Here's what you, you've got to get in this. David has been set as the man of God. And God's going to bring to him people who are going to become mighty people. They're going to become mighty men. Why? Because they have potential that nobody else sees, not even themselves. Here is the challenge to you as you become leaders. Listen to me real closely. As you become leaders, nobody wants to be leaders over a mess. Nobody wants to be a leader over a mess. If you're a manager, if you're a business owner, if you're in some type of leadership, nobody wants to lead a mess. Amen. These people are a mess. God will send to you the people that are in a mess. Why? Because when you help them out of their mess, when someone is genuine, they will develop a loyalty to you. See, David could not take over the kingdom with Saul's people in place. Oh, no. oh my God, what a mess you'd have then. Amen. You've got to take the people that are in a mess and fix the mess, help the mess. Get them out of the mess to where they see their potential. The next one is the people in debt. Why are you going to hear me talking about... I wrote myself some notes on this because you're going to have to understand I'm going to be talking to people that have issues with their mind and their thinking. You're going to hear me talking three things in this, in this phase of where this season, this, this, this cave, this adullam season, I'm going to be talking to people about your thinking, how you think. How you think has got to change. Why? Because how you think is how you believe. How you believe is how you walk. I talked to you about that all last week. How you think is how you believe, and how you believe is how you walk. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. That's right. You can't separate a man from his thinking. You think too small. You, you're thinking. You, you, if you're thinking wrong, you're going to make wrong choices. If you're listening to the wrong voice, you're going to make the wrong choice. Amen. The next one is the, the poverty mind. People have got money issues. If you've got money issues, you better listen to what I've got to say. Because I'm no dummy when it comes to money. <laughs> you may not know what I know. Amen. And I can tell you this. I can keep a secret. Oh, yeah. Chauncey came to me one day and he said, I want to know what you know about money. Basically in a nutshell. Yeah. 
And I said, well, come over to my house and sit down at the table. And he wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote. <laughs> I'm no dummy when it comes to money. I can tell you anything about any money in the world. I can tell you what the, the money in Brazil is. Why? Because I've studied it. I can tell you stocks, bonds, forex. I can tell you, come on, I can tell you anything you want to know. I look at that stuff daily. And nobody knows that stuff about me. That's why I want it on camera. Chauncey, after I told him everything that I knew, he said, I had no idea you knew all that. I want to talk to the people that have money problems. Why? Because, because they could not become mighty people. You will never become a mighty person when you have this hanging over your head. Amen. That's right. You will not. Debt is dangerous. If you're going to accomplish things on this earth through the kingdom of God, it's going to require money. That's right. I don't care what anybody's told you, they lied to you. I said they lied to you. If you don't think that money's important, then somebody's lied to you. The school system is not going to teach you about money. You can go through 12 years of education, you can get a four-year college education. You can come out with a business degree, but you won't get an education in money. Debt. These are people that owe something with interest the bigger part of understanding debt is that you have become subject to someone else. You've become subject to a creditor. This is who God doesn't every pastor want doesn't every pastor want uh, God to send millionaires to his church. Oh yeah. So they could tithe. Well what you gonna do when God sends people in debt to you? You just gonna let them you just gonna let them sit there? and drowned in debt and run up credit cards? Here's my philosophy behind it all. If you will listen, if you will listen to what I have to say, I'm going to move you from out of here into a place where you have capital. Amen. But you're going to have to listen. Chauncey told me, he said, I've been wondering for all the years how you've been making it. Isn't that what you said? Yeah. Well, I don't. I keep my secrets real close to me. I keep them real close. My whole point in this is: when you are in debt, you are subject to someone else. Someone else has the rule over you. Amen. You've got to get out of this place. David, you can't do mighty things 